do you get the sense that like the vultures are circling in Toronto? Like I get the feel, you know, when you get the feel and maybe you have a better sense of this as a former player where it's like, you think conversations are being had behind the scenes and this is not speculation. This is just me talking where the Leafs could be prepared to do something coach wise. If they don't rectify this thing, like it really feels like a big homestand. It's a three game homestand. They got Florida. They got Seattle. They got Boston for the next five on home ice. If you're going to make a change like this, it makes sense right now. Do you get that sense is uh, that they better wake up quickly here or there could be some change here? Well, I think everyone knows that. Like, like every single organization. I'm talking about the coach, though. No, I know. I know. And I, yeah. I think every organization knows, like every GM knows that if we go on this huge slide and we can't fix it, you know, our coach might be on his way out. Every coach knows, hey, it doesn't really matter what my contract is. If if we have this problem that doesn't get rectified, I might be on my way out. Like everyone knows that. And, you know, listening to Keith talk about Dubis and, you know, their rise to the NHL and to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they kind of did it together in tandem. And then Tree Living comes in and I'm sure the relationship is fine, but it's that they don't have that concrete, you know, background and relationship that the previous, um, you know, power did. So there's reason to believe that. And I, I think anyone knows that if you're not performing, you're, you might be on your way out. But I think it's probably exemplified here with uh, with Keith. I'm sure he wants to get these guys going, but that's always a th there's always the threat of not good enough changes will come you're not going to stay in this league long no matter who you are what position you are what your job is uh if you don't get results it's just it's that high end of a league and they all know that but yeah with with the way they're playing and the same problems being apparent you know i'm sure it's crossed the mind of of multiple people on that uh on that in that franchise including tree living and keith about what are we going to do and brennan shanahan like whoever's calling the shots if they get to a point where we're like man we're not we're not swimming out of this just with the status quo doing what we've been doing the last x amount of years they might pull the trigger on that it's probably going to be the first thing to go if they can't get a trade done and it doesn't look like one's on the horizon and talks dry up and and guys they wanted move on or re-sign or get traded elsewhere they might be like, holy shit, we're, we're not going to sit here and spin our tires for another month or two. We might have to make it a, make a move here. The easy response is like, look at his coaching record, look at his statistics. But if you look at the two head coaches now fired this year, they just have ripped it up in the regular season. Woodcroft and Edmonton, Dean Everson got canned yesterday by the Minnesota Wild. And you know this, sometimes you just need to make a change for the sake of making a change and bringing in a new voice. And I... I don't know why. I just feel like it could be time for the Maple Leafs to do that. Maybe it's because Bradtree Living is in there. Uh, Keith's not his guy. I understand people are going to come back with, well, they gave him an extension. It does not matter. We talked about money earlier on. The Leafs can pay him to go away if they so please. It just feels like the Leafs are in a lull, man. And maybe everything changes. Uh, I'm not going to change my perspective after one game. Consistency is what I'm looking at. But I will say that I, at the very least, what happened yesterday should be on Toronto's radar and I'm talking about Dean Evison. Love the guy's passion. Um, he's Canadian. I think for sure he would be in my radar for guys to potentially replace Sheldon Keefe if things do go south. If you want to play the whole winning percentage thing, 639 winning percentage with Minnesota, the best in team history. And let's not forget, he just coached a team that has around 14 mil against the cap for two players they bought out in Parisi and Suter. Uh, this guy got sewered big time. And sometimes you're just a scapegoat. They got off to a shit start. You can't trade the entire team. Dean Iverson loses his job. And I wonder if he could be on the periphery of Leafs Nation if something happens here. Yeah, I, I don't even want to speculate on who could be the replacement or, or what, or even if that's happening. You, you get the cart before the horse. But yeah, I just with knowing what it's like in a locker room with coaches, it's just there's a whole... There's an attitude, there's a vibe, there's a culture that starts with the coach and funnels it way, its way down. He's in charge of every meeting. He's the one putting together the video sessions. He's the one setting the tone for practice, what the intensity level is, what the expectations are. He's he's calling the shots on the bench. He's the one running the meetings and in intermission. Like a lot of the culture and the attitude of a hockey team runs straight from the coach and funnels down to everyone else. You could be just a fantastic coach with an incredible history and illustrious career. And if you have the group of people in the locker room that for whatever reason, together, they don't respond and have chemistry with what you're doing at the top and it funnels down and doesn't land 
then that's all there is to say about it. You could have, you could be Scotty Bowman. It, it doesn't matter if it doesn't land, you might have to move on and see if the replacement guy, holy shit, like practice is so much different. Uh, you know, the intensity level is so much higher. Ex expectations are higher. Holy shit. I'm going to go in the gym and I'm going to make sure that like I'm warmed up and I got a good sweat on because at the drop of the first drill in practice, things are flying out there. It's just a different attitude. Holy like, look at this uh, video session. We're looking at other teams and the way they play. We've never done that before. Like, it's just everything can be different. And I understand why you fire a coach. It's not always justified. It's not always the coach's fault. But changing it up and mixing up a coach at the top can really, like, can really just, like, throw a grenade on 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 the team and in the locker room. And when it lands and gets put back together, it could look completely different even with the same players. So that could be on the horizon. I mean, if, if the Leafs continue at this pace – um like are they even they're barely in a playoff spot right now mm -hmm. so if this continues i imagine changes will be on on the horizon yes that's the spark you need sometimes right in recent memory teams like pittsburgh the st louis blues have made changes like that drastic ones and have gone on crazy runs and that was a spark they needed but again it's just the same old same it's like banging your head against the wall and we expected that going into the year and it's been pretty much the same where this team has really really struggled to find an identity <laughs> Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, you got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.